Okay, guys, shall we start? So, my name is Alexander. I work for Marentis. And I've been driving Artifact Repository in Glance uh, for about a year already. The official announcements uh, were made about six months ago at Paris, at Paris Design Summit. And here I'm going to talk to you about how to use Glance Artifact Repository to deliver the applications to end users of your cloud. So when we speak about applications in the cloud, we usually mean different things. We usually mean uh, different components uh, designed to work together. And the simplest way to deliver application is just to have a single VM image with pre-installed, pre-configured software, which can just run a virtual machine and use it. Well, sometimes we do have such things, but usually you don't need a cloud to run such software, right? It's some, something very simple. Uh, in real-world situation, when you have real-world production-grade services, you have to run multiple, multiple virtual machines using different resources configured to interact with each other, and the software deployment is like a complicated process, so it's not just a single VM. That's usually VM image plus some binary software bundle needed to deploy that, plus some orchestration scenarios. You may use heat or you may use something else to orchestrate all the stuff. And then you have configure software on each VM to interact with each other and with a cloud environment. And then you have to maintain, uh, to, to run maintain scenarios on all of that stuff to do, I don't know, backups, uh, health, uh, health checks, uh, failover recoveries, and so on. So this is a bunch of uh, different stuff which cannot be natively placed at the same place in OpenStack. Uh, images, they live in Glens, right? Uh, and that's a good major component which has been with OpenStack for almost all its history. And well, the binary software may be placed in various kinds of package repositories. If you are on Python, then Pipe is probably fine, and you may use various kinds of uh, repositories of your Linux distribution. But well, sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes uh, you don't have internet connectivity. Sometimes you have something very specific which cannot be placed in. Debian or some other repo. And well, in this case, you have to place all that stuff to some kind of file storage, to different kinds of volumes mapped on your block storage. Uh, and you have to, well, ma maintain all that stuff altogether. Uh, or if you are speaking about various kinds of public clouds with internet connectivity, you may want to place all your content to some kind of content delivery network, which has its pros and which has its cons. So uh, that's just a number of different places to put the components of your application, which usually do not provide you the actual tooling you need to control the whole distribution process. There are proprietary solutions, like there is very good artifactory solution, which provides you a tooling to build like your CI-CD system and publish the artifacts built in your CI-CD systems to your end users. But the thing is not, the thing is not natural to OpenStack. It's like third-party solution, which is not uh, present in some clouds, and you have to maintain it and deploy it. And while well, there are others, which have their pros and cons as well. Uh, so we have decided to have a native solution which will be natural to OpenStack, which will be built by OpenStack community and maintained by Open, OpenStack community to provide solutions to distribute, to deliver the assets needed for applications, needed for cloud users, uh, cloud use cases to the end users. Uh, the thing is that Glance, can do very good work in delivering images to end users, right? It has a catalog, it has tags, it has various kinds of policies, it has various kinds of uh, metadata regis registry and its properties. So for images, these solutions already exist and we all use them. So if it exists for images, Let's try and do the same for everything else in the very same manner and in the very same project. 
So we have announced the initiative called Artifact Repository. Uh, I was presenting a talk about that in Paris. And the initiative itself is an active development since about the July. So in killer release, uh, we have almost completed its development and glance. So most of the code is already landed. I'll touch it a bit, a bit later. So the overall idea of Artifact Repository is that it acts as a glance for everything else in OpenStack, like Glance stores images, and they're consumed by Nova. And Artifact Repository stores different kinds of other objects which may be consumed by other OpenStack projects. So uh, this may be heat templates, this may be some kinds of other objects used by the projects, for example, Mistral workbooks, Murano packages, I don't know, the What's the name for Magnum, uh, Magnum resources? They have, they, they have some. Uh, the Solom plan files also are used uh, to require some kind of a catalog. So a lot of different uh, components and sub-projects in OpenStack did require some kind of catalog to store their entities, their assets. So this is not only about applications. Right? Heat template on its own is not an application. It's just an orchestration thing which may or may not be used to deploy an application. And same goes to, well, almost every, uh, everything else. But the thing is that artifact repository is pluggable. And the type of the entity which can be and should be placed in artifact repository is entirely user definable or deployer definable. So it's a plugin, it's a Pythonic program, a Pythonic uh, code, which defines the structure, the meta structure, and the various kinds of logic for artifact type, for asset type. So it becomes possible to define your application, to describe your application as an artifact. But first of all, what is an artifact? That's a slide from my previous presentation, but probably not all of you have been in Paris so last, last year when I was presenting it. So the artifact is defined as a an object consumable by OpenStack services. So that's not just an arbitrary chunk of data. And it's not like your pictures. It's not like your SMS messages. It's object consumed by OpenStack services, which contains binary data and has some metadata describing it and describing its various properties and capabilities. The structure of these properties and the binary data is well defined, defined by the developers of the projects who are going to consume that. So if we speak about your application and you are the developer who is going to consume that application, deploy it on the end user's cloud and run it, it's your responsibility to define the structure, to define data and metadata for your artifact type. Uh, and you publish it in the artifact repository. Uh, you make it available for your users in one way or another, I'll tell about that. Then it becomes immutable, so nobody can modify it, nobody can um, change it somehow in an expected way, unexpected for you and for your users. So as soon as your users use Artifact Repository to discover, find, and locate your application, they may be sure that this application is the exact thing you have placed there, you have delivered to them. And also, this thing has like a versioning support, dependency support, uh, various kinds of things which you will expect to see in application catalog. So when you define an artifact, as I have told you, you have to describe its metadata and data. So when we speak about applications, uh, you will probably want to describe properties uh, which are natural to your application. So you just specify the name, the description, uh, the version of your application in the catalog, uh, the license which you use to distribute the application to your users, the information about you as a developer or as a the support or maintainer or whatever, whoever you are for, you, for this application, you may publish their website links, you may add any information you want and any information you think is useful for your users. Uh, at the end, all this data will become available at the catalog. 
it will be browsable and searchable. The users will be able to filter your applications in catalog. For example, if they want like GPL only applications, they may filter by license. And well, everything you specify as application metadata may be used against you, uh, may be used to help you. Uh, uh, and then you define the data. So uh, as I said, there are a number of resources uh, which compose the application. Uh, Fame images are a good example. Uh, they may be a crucial part of your application because uh, sometimes applications require the software to be pre-installed on the virtual machine. Uh, then, if you want to orchestrate the deployments, you have hit templates which are very specific for your environments, very specific for your applications, and very specific to your deployments. So you want them to be bundled with the rest of your application. And there are configuration scripts, various kinds. It depends on what tooling do you prefer to configure your VMs. This may be just simple shell scripts, or you may use Puppet or Ansible or Salt or whatever you like. And then, when you are done with defining the application deployment scenarios, you want them to be displayed in a catalog somehow. So you may want to bundle icons or screenshots or whatever, whatever resources, graphical resources you want to uh, be displayed in the catalog and the dashboard or whatever tool you, tooling you use to show this application to users before they de de deploy it for you. So that's also part of your application and it becomes binary part of the artifact when you define your application as artifact. And then various kind of not necessarily binary data, the textual data. You may include user manuals, you may include uh, end user license agreements, you may include help. Uh, once again, everything you want, it's up to you to use this data at the end user site, but the catalog provides you tooling to describe the data structure for that. So, and then there's more. Um, it's usual to have like requirements. Applications rarely go alone, right? So in most, uh, in most catalogs, uh, we have the concept of uh, requirements between uh, some prerequisite libraries and the end applications. Uh, artifact repositories support that as well. So when you design the, your artifact for your application, you specify the various kind of dependencies this application may have on other applications and on other artifacts which are not applications on their own, but may be required for your applications to run. On the previous slide, I had this VM image here as a data object, and this is very natural uh, when this image is very specific uh, for your application and cannot be used without it. But in some cases, you are reusing some, um, some generic images which are not part of your application, but are still very valuable or very usable for your application. And in this case, you may want these two entities to be two independent artifacts with independent life cycles and independent, uh, well, entries in a catalog. But still, you may want to have a dependency between them. So when your end user uploads your application from, uh, downloads your application from catalog, the catalog will provide a hint uh, in the API or in the UI, and uh, we'll provide a way to download all the dependencies all together. Same as PyP does when you, as a Python developer, uh, request, uh, re require a, pa a Python package from that repository, and it downloads all the requirements and, well, spoils your virtual environment. That's PyP. Uh, so, uh, and of course, all the components uh, which may be linked by these dependency relations, may be versioned. So you don't have to link particular, let's say, VM image to your application. You may specify that your application requires latest Ubuntu image, or even latest Ubuntu long-term service release, with some sophisticated query which defines the metadata which should be present on the artifact you're referencing to, and this reference will be established. And when your end user wants to download your application, uh, the dynamic query will be executed at the time, and the appropriate requirement will be downloaded. Once again, very similar to PyPC, if you're familiar with piece of software. And last but not least, when the application is published in the catalog, you may want some other actions to be executed. 
Uh, first of all, you want to make sure that all the data which is part of application data or metadata is valid. It may be valid at all globally, or it may be valid for the particular OpenStack cloud for the particular environment where you want this application to be used. So the particular catalog may validate the contents of artifacts um, and so of your applications according to the current state of the cloud. For example, if your application uh, requires an image which is not present at that particular deployment for some reason, for example, the user didn't upload the prerequisite or it was forbidden by policies, the validation will detect that and mark the artifact as invalid, so you users will not be able to use that application. The logic for this validation uh, may be extended and customized by you. As I said, uh, artifacts are defined by Pythonic plugins, by programs. So the logic for that is just regular Pythonic methods which may be executed synchronously or asynchronously with various kinds of checks and policy enforcements allowing you to specify various kinds of custom logic checks and workflows. For example, a very common situation is to compute a digital, to validate a digital signature to validate the authorship. Uh, if you download the um, uh, application from some external source, I will touch it a bit later, uh, you may want to make sure, or your users may want to make sure, that uh, this application is indeed published by the person who pretends to be its publisher. Because, well, you know, I may publish something uh, very, very, of, of very bad quality and like uh, state that it's written by, I don't know, Bill Gates, somebody else. Uh, everybody will believe me because it's Bill Gates, but well. Um, sometimes you need to verify the authorship. And, uh, well, the common world, the, the present world use uh, public keys, public, public digital signatures for that. And you may define uh, the signing logic and you may define the validation logic which your end users will use to make sure that the application is indeed valid and safe. Also, you may add like a virus checks or an appropriate contents checks and anything you think is appropriate for your kind of application. Also, you may integrate with various kinds of third party services. Uh, if you want to send like email notification about the application being published, you may do it. You may add that custom logic hook and the catalog will do it for you. So in your cloud, you may organize uh, the delivery of your applications between the tenants of your cloud. So OpenStack is a multi-tenant environment and once the application is published in OpenStack, its uh, publisher may make it available to other users, other tenants of OpenStack. Uh, it may be just private for that particular tenant or maybe global for the whole cloud or something in between. Like I share the application with some other tenants and others cannot see it. And it's very customizable and it has various kinds of policies. Uh, so, for example, without modifying any line of code by just changing the policies, you may get App Store-like behavior when the users submit their applications for pre-moderation when uh, administrators of the cloud uh, check the applications, make sure that they don't violate different kinds of rules or uh, policies of, of enterprise, and then make that applications available to other users in that particular cloud. Or you may make a post-moderation system where the applications become available to everybody immediately, but they may complain that they're bad or tell something, some problems about that, and then administrators will temporarily disable them, make sure that, uh, well, just do some investigation, make sure that the complaint, complaint is valid and deleted, or they say, okay, that, that was a wrong, false alarm, and make it available back again. So you have uh, various kinds of options to distribute the applications uh, between different tenants of your cloud. Uh, but not only within a single cloud. Uh, the cross-cloud application delivery is also possible with the artifact repository. So, for example, the simplest thing is when uh, you import 
uh, an application to your cloud from some other locations. Or you may export it as a single file, place in some, I don't know, put it on Dropbox and uh, deliver to your friends via Dropbox or something else. So applications are packaged into single files which may be distributed peer-to-peer -peer between the clouds. However, the most powerful thing is ability to be able to build federations of repositories. Like think of DNS system, like when there is centralized repo and there are like a downstream repos and well, the leaves of the tree uh, correspond to particular clouds and at some points there are central repositories of applications for particular uh, companies or enterprises. And at the top of the tree, there may be some global repository like community blessed OpenStack repository of application, applications. If you have seen the keynote on Tuesday, you have probably seen that OpenStack Foundation has announced the apps.openstack.org. It's a community application catalog. Uh, it's a OpenStack Foundation uh, initiative to deliver various kinds of assets or artifacts or applications to their users. It doesn't use, artif use artifact repository yet, but it may be used for that. And even if, no, if it's not, it, will, it may become the center, to, uh, the center which distributes applications for various kinds of artifact repositories around the world, which will be used again to redistribute them to the particular clouds. Uh, the actual catalog at the apps.openstack.org is in beta now, and it's up to us, and it's up to you as developers, if you're developers, uh, to affect the way uh, how it moves, to contribute, and if you're interested in building this federation of application repositories, uh, please take part in the design sessions, please take part in the community work uh, with that initiative, and we'll build a better application delivery network together. Uh, the current state of the thing. So that's actually a tricky question. This, this session was announced at about February when they were submitting the talks to the presentations. And this was like in the middle of development. And uh, for now, uh, the most of the code is landed in Glance. Uh, most, but not all of the code. So, unfortunately, I cannot tell you now that take the latest Glance master branch and use it to deploy the artifact repository. Unfortunately, a couple of commits are still being reviewed, but we do really plan to see them landed at Liberty One milestone. So, in about a month, uh, we'll have this thing fully functional and working at the Glance master. Uh, the API status for that thing is experimental. So it means that we still may change it and we still may uh, adopt various kinds of best practices and the latest, uh, latest happenings in OpenStack community. Because if you have attended the API working group sessions, you see that, you saw that uh, their, their guidelines are modifying, their guidelines are evolving, and they all work very hard to make OpenStack APIs better, and we want to support that as well. Because initially, uh, Artifact Repository API was trying to copy and uh, replicate the existing Glance APIs. But the world doesn't stay, stay still, so the APIs are evolving, and we want to make sure that Artifact Repository APIs is on the cutting edge of OpenStack API standards. And important thing is that the current Glance images should become artifacts as well, eventually, someday. They're not artifacts now, and they will not be artifacts in Liberty. However, eventually, we want all the assets among all the OpenStack clouds to be artifacts of a single artifact federation. That's our ultimate goal, and it will just well, it will give us a synergy between different projects, and in this case, the artifact repository will be like an integration point for all the projects among all the OpenStack uh, ecosystems. Uh, because of that, there is a question which, is, which doesn't have the answer yet. Should the thing remain in Glance? We have incubated there, that's true. Uh, however, uh, 
glance is mostly about VM images. And now we have an open discussion in the glance community about uh, if we need to separate artifact repository into a standalone project and at some point in future deprecate the existing legacy glance image, image listing, image browsing APIs and let glance just do what they do the best, image related manipulations, uh, data conversions, uh, introspections and all that stuff and let artifact repository to be the catalog of all the stuff including images. So there is a contributor meetup tomorrow for Glance. Uh, if you have like ATC badges and if you are willing to take part in, um, in contributing to Glance and to Artifact Repository, uh, please feel free to stop by at Contributors Meetup tomorrow. And once again, you may take your part in the shaping of Artifact's future. And at some sense, this is a very important moment in shaping OpenStack's future, as I believe. So uh, I think that's all I wanted to tell you about the artifacts and how you may use artifacts uh, for delivering your applications. There are many questions which remain unanswered yet, and I can talk much longer about some technical details, but I would prefer to hear any questions first and like answer them first. Any questions? Well, <laughs> in this case, thank you for your attention and please join the initiative of the community application catalog because this may be the future of OpenStack applications on your clouds. <laughs>